Welcome to the Book of Days Project. Today is February 27th. Born on this day, George Morley, Bishop of Winchester, 1597 in Cheapside. John David Michaelis, Orientalist, 1717. Henry W. Longfellow, poet, born 1807, died. The Emperor Geta, murdered in 212. Philip Nye, nonconformist, died in 1673 in London. John Evelyn, diarist, 1706 in Woto. It's a day of St. Nestor, bishop in Pamphylia, martyred in 250. St. Julian, Cronion, and Besas, all martyred in the 3rd century. Let's talk of John Evelyn, the diarist. This excellent man, the perfect model of an English gentleman of the 17th century, known as Silva Elevin. Evelyn, from his work with that title on forest trees, was born of an ancient and honorable family at Wooten House in Surrey on the 31st of October 1620. At four years old, he was taught to read by one friar in the church porch at Wooten. He next learned Latin in the school at Lewes in Sussex. His father proposed sending him to Eton, but was deferred from doing so by the report of the severe discipline in that school. He completed his education at Balliol College, Oxford, and in 1640 was entered at the Middle Temple, London, but soon relinquished what he calls the unpolished study of the law. A meter reader just walked by. Having stored his mind with travel and study, he entered on a long career of active, useful, and honorable employment. He was not, however, without some share in the intrigues concerned with the restoration of Charles II, after which he was often at court. On the foundation of the Royal Society in 1662, he was appointed one of the fellows and a member of the council. But the delight of Elvin Evelyn was in the pursuits of rural economy. He was the great improver of English gardening. When he first laid out his gardens at Say's Court, Deptford, which he let to the Tsar Peter the Great of Russia, who damaged them to the extent of 150 pounds in three weeks. Brass Russians. Evelyn then retired to his paternal home at Wooten, sweetly environed with delicious streams and venerable woods, end quote. The latter valued at 100 pounds sterling. His love of planting and the want of timber for the navy led him to write his Sylve, a discourse on forest trees, the first book printed by order of the Royal Society. It led to the planting of many millions of forest trees and is one of the very few books in the world which completely affect what they were designed to do. Another valuable work by Evelyn is his diary, or calendarium, the most interesting picture of the time in which he lived, and the manuscript of which was accidentally saved from being used as a waste paper. Evelyn's diary is, however, an after-compilation. Unlike Pepys' diary, which is an unstudied record from day to day, just like your beloved Book of Days project. John Evelyn died. In his 86th year at his townhouse called The Reed in Dover Street, Piccadilly, on the 27th of February, 1705. His remains rest in a raised coffin-shaped tomb in Wooten Church, the first Russian embassy to England. February 27, 1557, the first Russian embassy arrived in the neighborhood of London. It came in rather remarkable circumstances. The Russian Emperor Ivan Vasilyevich thought the time had now arrived when his country ought to enter upon formal commercial relations with England. He therefore charged a nobleman named Osip Napier to proceed thither with good lead company and bearing suitable presents for the famous and excellent princes Philip and Mary, King and Queen of England, end quote. It appears that among the gifts were a number of the skins of the sable with the teeth, ears, and claws of the animal preserved, four living sables with chains and collars, thirty lusards, rich and beautiful, six great skins such as the emperor himself wore, and a great Jer Falcon, with a silver drum used for a lure to it in hawking. Interesting. The expedition sailed in several English vessels from the port of St. Nicholas in Russia, but was very unfortunate in the voyage, several vessels being thrown away or forced to seek shelter on the coast of Norway. One called the Edward Bonaventure, containing the ambassador, arrived with difficulty after a four months voyage on the east coast of Aberdeenshire in Scotland, along with a smaller vessel called her pink there they were driven ashore by a violent storm near Kinnaird Head, with a boat containing the Grand Pilot, with the ambassador and seven other Russian gentlemen making for land in the dark. 
was overwhelmed and beaten on the rocks. Thus the pilot and several of the Russians and mariners were drowned. And only the ambassador himself and two or three others were saved. The ship became a total wreck, and such of her valuable goods as came on shore, including the gifts to the English monarchs, were pillaged by the rude people of the coast. But the ambassador and his small company were speedily received under care of the gentry of the district and treated with the greatest kindness. Stowe relates in his chronicle, As soon as it was known to the company in London of the loss of their pilot, men, goods, and ships, the merchants obtained the Queen's letters to the Lady Dowager of Scotland for the gentle entertainment of the said ambassador with his train and restitution of his goods, and also addressed two gentlemen, Mr. Lawrence Hassey, doctor of the civil law, and George Gilpin, with money and other requisites, into Scotland to comfort him, and his there, and also to conduct him into England. We learn from a contemporary Scottish writer, Bishop Leslie, that the ambassador and his friends were brought to Edinburgh, and there entertained handsomely by the Queen Regent for some time, after which they set out for Berwick, tended by Lord Hume on the part of the Queen, and accompanied by two English gentlemen who had come for their succor, besides five hundred gentlemen of Scotland on horseback. Arriving within twelve miles of London on the 27th of February, 1557, the Russian ambassador was there received in formal style by eighty merchants in goodly apparel, and with chains of gold, all mounted on horseback, by whom he was conducted to a merchant's house four miles from the city, and there honorably lodged. Next day, says Stowe, he was, by the merchant adventurers for Russia, to the number of 140 persons, and so many or more servants in one livery, livery conducted towards the city of London, where, by the way, he had not only the hunting of the fox, etc., but also by the Queen's Majesty's commandment, was received by the Viscount of Montague, he being accompanied by diverse lusty knights, esquires, gentlemen, and yeomen to the number of 300 horses, led into the north parts of the city, of London, where by four merchants richly apparelled, <laughs> was presented to him a fair, richly trapped horse, together with a footcloth of crimson velvet enriched with gold laces. Pray tell. Whereupon the ambassador mounted, riding towards Smithfield Bars. The Lord Mayor, accompanied with the alderman in scarlet, did receive him, and so riding through the city of London, between the Lord Mayor and the Viscount Montague, a great number of merchants and noble persons riding before was conducted to the lodgings in French church, street, etc., etc., etc. There you have it. Uh, notes on the arrival of the first Russian ambassador to the British Isles. Thank you for joining us. Do svidaniya.